Hello everyone, welcome to our chemistry class. I'm Ibida for Jacob. Today the topic we are considering is carbon. Can somebody say after me, carbon? That's what we are considering today. Now, many things around us contain carbon. Stick contain carbon, paper contain carbon, and several other things. Even a limestone. At the end of this class, you should be able to do the following. You should be able to identify various substances that contain carbon around us. You should be able to write the electronic structure of carbon. You should be able to calculate the states of carbon in their compound. You should also be able to explain the allotropes of carbon. You should be able to explain the um, hydrocarbons. And you should be able to explain crude oil and natural gases. You should be able to state the uses of hydrocarbon. Now, let's start from the first one. Carbon. Like I've told you, many things around us contain carbon. Like you have something like steak, paper, diesel, kerosene, fruit, and many other things contain carbon. Now let's look at uh, carbon in the periodic table. The position of carbon in the periodic table. Carbon is placed at the center of the second period in the periodic table. And carbon has an atomic number of six. It has an atomic number of six. It has an electronic configuration of 2,4. Here, this is K share and this is L share. Now, carbon would have formed two oxidation states of plus 4 and minus 4 because it's at the middle of the second period. Now, carbon has the electronic structure of 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. So that's the electronic structure of carbon. Now let's look at the detail of the electronic structure of carbon. You discover that carbon has um, a structure of this. This is carbon. It has an atomic mass. It has an atomic mass of 12, atomic number of 6. The number of electrons in carbon is 12 minus 6, which is 6. Are we together? Now, I want us to look at the next thing. You should be able to calculate the original state of carbon in different compounds. Original state of carbon in different compounds. For example, let's look at carbon monoxide, that is carbon 2 oxide. Carbon 2 oxide. How do we find the original state of carbon here? Now, how do we know that the original state of carbon? is 2 here. Now, you already know that the original state of oxygen is minus 2. So you have C plus minus 2 is equal to 0. So here now you have C minus 2 equal to 0. And when you collect the like time, you have C equal to 2, uh, I mean C equal to 0 plus 2. That means that C equal to plus 2. So here now we call this one carbon 2 oxide, carbon 2 oxide. Now let's look at an, another compound which is CO2, CO2. What is the ozone state of carbon here? Now let's look at how we can get the, the ozone state of carbon in CO2. So this is um, C plus 2 because it has a subscript of 2 into minus 2 is equal to 0. So here now we have C plus 2 times 2 we give you, I mean 2 times minus 2 we give you minus 4. Plus minus 4 we give you 0. So here now you have C plus times minus of course we give you minus. So you have C minus 4 is equal to 0. So now I have C equal to 0 plus Four. So your um, C now equal to plus 4. That simply means that this is pronounced as carbon 4 oxide. Carbon 4 oxide. Because of our time, we are going to look at one more compound. One more compound before we move to the next subtopic. So let's look at this compound. This is Na2CO3. So we want to look at the ozone state of carbon here. Here we have two atoms of sodium two atoms of sodium plus carbon plus three atoms of 
oxygen, and the ozone state of oxygen, you agree with me, is minus 2. So you have this one to minus 2, so it's equal to 0. Here you have this one, the ozone state of um, sodium is plus 1, and it has, um, and we have two atoms of sodium, so we have to have plus 1 here. Here now you have 2 times 1 is 2, plus C, plus 3 times minus 2 will give you minus 6. So you have minus 6 equal to 0. Here now you have 2 plus C, um, plus minus 6 equal to 0. So here, collect the like term. You have C, I mean you have 2 minus 6 plus c equal to 0. So 2 minus 6 will give you minus 4. So you have minus 4 plus c equal to 0. So from this place now, you can now collect the light term. You have c equal to 0 because you have minus 4 here. When minus 4 crosses equality sign, it becomes plus. You have c plus 4. So that simply means that the ozone state of carbon in Na2CO3 is plus is plus four. That means you pronounce Na2CO3 as sodium triozocarbonate four. Sodium sodium triozocarbonate four. So you, though you may pronounce it as disodium triozocarbonate four. Now let's move on to the next subtopic. The next subtopic is compound of uh, carbon, compounds of carbon. Of course, carbon is present in many compounds. As we have seen, we have carbon 2 oxide, carbon 2 oxide. We have carbon 4 oxide, carbon 4 oxide. We, since we have looked at how we can calculate the ozone state of carbon in various compounds, you should be able to understand how we come about the four in this place. Now, this is carbon 4 oxide. This is sodium triozocarbonate 4. Sodium triozocarbonate 4. Then you can also have something called sodium hydrogen triozocarbonate 4. Sodium hydrogen triozocarbonate 4. Then you can also have um, you can have potassium triozocarbonate 4. You can also have potassium hydrogen triozocarbonate 4. You can also have um, magnesium triozocarbonate 4. You can also have, of course, calcium triozocarbonate 4. Now, apart from this, we also have something called ammonium triozocarbonate 4. Ammonium triozocarbonate 4. Now, all these compounds are called inorganic compound, inorganic compound of carbon. But we also have some compounds that are organic compounds of carbon. For example, carbon is present in arcane. It's present in arcane. It's present in arcane. Carbon is present in arcane. Now, because of our time, we might not be able to look into the detail of this. But let me just give the first member of this compound. The first member of arcane is methane. And its chemical formula is CH4. I mean, its chemical structure is CH4. Now, the first member of arcane is C2H2. That is called uh, ethene. It is called ethene. Why the first member of um, the first member of arcane is C C three. So okay, let's leave this one for now because we we, we may not be able to exhaust it for now. Now we have looked at some compound of uh, carbon. Can somebody list? Four compound of carbon. Like we have said, we have carbon two oxide, we have carbon four oxide, we have sodium trisocarbonate four, and of course we have 
methane. So thank you very much. Let's move on to the next subtopic. Now what we are looking at allotropes of carbon. Allotropes of carbon. Now we know that several things may occur in several in several forms. Le in the, like in the case of carbon, carbon exists in several forms. The form in which carbon exists is known as allotrope of carbon. The form in which carbon exists is known as allotrope of carbon. So carbon, the uh, allotrope is a form in which carbon exists. That is, the existence of carbon in different form is known as is allotrope. Then allotropy is defined as the existence of carbon in different structural form. That is allotropy. Not only carbon exhibit allotropy. Some other elements also exhibit allotropy. So, uh, all those elements include uh, sulfur. Uh, we have um, um, oxygen. We also have other elements like tin. All this, this element exhibit allotropy. Though not elements in the periodic table exhibit allotropy, but some of them, like the one that I've just mentioned. Now, the allotrope of carbon is classified into two groups. The allotrope of carbon is classified into two groups. We have the crystalline allotrope of carbon, and we have the amorphous allotrope of carbon. But let's look at the first one, which is the crystalline allotrope of carbon. The crystal allotrope of carbon is divided into diamond and graphite. What did I say? Diamond and graphite. Why the amorphous allotrope of carbon is um, divided into coal, coke, um, animal charcoal, um, different other ones. So we are going to look it at this one in detail. We are going to look at this one in detail. Like, like I've said, we have coal, we have coke, we have charcoal, we have lamb black, we have sugar charcoal, we have animal charcoal, and so on. Now, let's move back to the first one, that is the crystalline allotrope of carbon. We are going to look at the differences between graphite and diamond. Graphite and diamond. Now, diamond is the hardest substance known. Diamond is the hardest substance known, while graphite is one of the softest substance known. Graphite is very soft. But despite the fact that diamond is very hard, it has no metallic luster. So it is a non-metal. But graphite has metallic luster, so it is a metal. And of course, we agree with me that Metals are good conductor of heat and electricity. Why not metals are poor conductor of heat and electricity? That simply means that diamond is a poor conductor of heat and electricity because it is a non-metal. Then graphite is a good conductor of heat and electricity because it is what? Because it is a metal. Now, let's look at another property of diamond. Diamond has a density of 3.5 gram per cm cube. 3.5 gram per cm cube. Why graphite has a density of 2.3 gram per cm cube. So that is the density of graphite. Why this is the density of diamond. And, uh, and of course, let's look at the shape of graphite and diamond. Diamond is octahedra in shape. Diamond is octahedra. That is, it is bonded to eight carbon atoms. Why graphite is hexagonal? Hexagonal. From your polygon in your junior secondary school. You agree with me that heza simply means six, while octa means eight. Now, the diamond is octagonal, while graphite is hexagonal. 
Okay, now let's continue. We, let's look at chemical properties of carbon. Now, you need to agree with me that, you need to agree with me that carbon, the different form of carbon have um, similar chemical properties, but they have different physical properties. The first one we are going to look at is carbon undergo combustion. Carbon undergo combustion. What does it mean for something to undergo combustion? That simply means that it can burn in oxygen. It can burn in oxygen. Now, let's look at how carbon undergo combustion. Carbon burn in limited supply of air, limited supply of air to give carbon to oxide. Limited supply of air to give carbon to oxide. To give carbon to oxide. Because this is a solid, it's gas, and it's also a gas. Now, carbon also burn in excess supply of air to give carbon for oxide. It burns in excess supply of air to give carbon for oxide. So you have this one plus um, O2 will give you CO2. So this is excess supply of air, while this is limited supply of air. Now, another chemical property of carbon is that carbon can combine with some elements at a very high temperature. Carbon can combine with some elements at a very high temperature. For example, carbon combine with sulfur to give carbon sulfide. Carbon combine with sulfur to give carbon sulfide. This is carbon sulfide. So you have two here. Carbon also combine with calcium to give calcium dicarbide. Calcium dicarbide. So you have carbon plus calcium. It will give you uh, Ca. C2. This is calcium dicarbide. Now, th those are part of the chemical properties of uh, carbon. Now, let's also look at the next chemical property of carbon. Carbon acts as a reducing agent. Carbon acts as a reducing agent. Now, it can reduce oxide of metal to their respective oxide. For example, let's look at how carb carbon can react with copper to oxide to form copper and, of course, uh, CO. So this is copper. It reduces copper to oxide to copper. So that is another chemical property of, uh, of carbon. Now let's look at one other chemical property of carbon. A strong reducing, I mean, a strong oxidizing agent can oxidize carbon to carbon two oxide. A strong oxidizing agent can oxidize carbon, I mean, to carbon four oxide. Now, example of such strong oxidizing agent is triozonitrate five acid. Triozonitrate five acid. So you can have HNO three. It will give you. Um, CO2 plus H2O plus NO2. So a strong oxidizing agent can oxidize uh, carbon to carbon four oxide. Now let's do a brief review of what we have just done about chemical properties of carbon. Now give four chemical properties of carbon. Like we have said, carbon undergo combustion reaction. That's number one. Carbon combined directly with some element at a very high temperature. Carbon acts as a reducing agent. And carbon is also being oxidized to carbon dioxide by strong oxidizing agent. Now, let's move on to an amorphous allotrope of carbon. Amorphous allotrope of carbon. Of course, the first one we are going to look at is coal. Coal. Can somebody say after me? Coal. That's the first one we are going to look at. Now, 
about 350 million years ago, it is believed that there exists a great forest with huge trees. There also exists swamp and marsh around the area. So this tree um, died and they were buried in those um, swamp and marsh. They were buried under the rock, under the sea, and of course under the ground. So this tree um, undergo a chemical reaction called uh, undergo a chemical reaction, and in, in that process, they are converted from being plant material onto what is called coal. They are converted from plant material into coal. Now, now that is how that was how coal was formed. In Nigeria, we have a large deposit of coal in Enugu. Large deposit of coal in Enugu. Enugu. Now, I want to look at different types of coal. We have the first one we are going to look at is pit coal. Pit coal. Now, this pit coal, pit coal, this pit coal is not an original type of coal. Why? Because it is only about 60% coal. It's only about 60% Coal. It was formed as a result of um, lack of, I mean, insufficient oxygen, insufficient nutrients, and high level of acidity of the swamp and marsh. So, as a result of that, the formation of coal from the plant was drastically reduced. Now, in fact, you can even identify the trees or the wood that form the coal. You can see identified. Why? Because it's, there's no complete formation of coal when it comes to peat. The first um, type of coal that we have, the first original type of coal we have is lignite. Lignite. We call it lignite. That one has about 70% carbon. 70% carbon. It is formed as a result of um, De uh, decrease in oxygen, in hydrogen, and some other things. So it is formed like that. So it is 70%, let me write it to, that is lignite. Lignite coal, that is 70% coal. Now the third one, the third one, of course, is very common among us, around us. It is what we even use at home for cooking. We use it at home for cooking. So it is called bituminous coal. Bituminous coal. Bituminous coal. Now, the last one, this bituminous, okay, sorry, before we move to the last one, this bituminous coal is often called soft coal. Soft coal. The lignite coal is called brown coal. Brown coal. Why the last one is a hard coal and it is called anthracite coal. Anthracite. It is called anthracite coal. So that is the last one. It is about 94% coal. Why bituminous coal is about 85% coal. Okay, now before we move on to the next subtopic, I want you to list types of coal, four types of coal that we have. Of course, we have pit coal, we have lignite coal, we have bituminous coal, and we have anthracite coal. Okay, now let's move on to the next one. We can, um, coal consists of several materials. In fact, it consists of uh, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. It also contains some impurities like sulfur, it contains phosphorus, it also contains nitrogen. It, it contains varieties of material. Now, for you to get this variety of material, there's need for you to heat this coal in a limited supply of air. Heating coal for a long time in the absence of air or in a limited supply of air will um, 
you'll be able to produce what we call number one, we have coal gas. You'll be able to get coal gas. Number two, you'll be able to produce ammoniac liquor. Ammoniac liquor. Then number three, you will also be able to produce what they call coal tar. Coal tar. And of course, there will always be a deposit where coal is heated for a long time in a limited supply of air. And that deposit is called coke. Coke. All this, all this um, one that are produced from coal, they are produced from coal from by the process called destructive distillation of coal. Destructive distillation of coal. Now, destructive distillation of coal simply means heating coal in the absence of air for a long time. Heating coal in the absence of air for a long time. Now, somebody may ask from you, what are the products of the destructive distillation of coal? The product of destructive distillation of coal. Simply tell the person, coal gas, ammoniac liquor, coal and coke. Now, all this one have various uses. So because of our time, let's move on to the next slide. Now I want to concentrate on what we call coke now. Coke. Coke is the non-volatile residue which contains about 90% of amorphous carbon and is chemically similar to hard coal. It is the residue that you form, I mean the residue that you have when you heat coal in a limited supply of air. Now, there's something we call gasification of coke. Gasification. Gasification of coke. Gasification of coke. That's, that's simply me. Um, fuel gases, gasification of coal. When we are talking about gasification of coal, we are talking about fuel gases. There are two basic fuel gases we have. We have producer gas and we have water gas. We have producer gas and we have water gas. Producer gas is a mixture of nitrogen and carbon two oxide. It's a mixture of nitrogen and carbon two oxide. The nitrogen is a non-combustible element. That is, nitrogen does not support combustion. Why carbon two oxide co supports combustion? That simply means that nitrogen cannot support burning, but carbon two oxide support burning. And um, producer gas. Produ sorry, excuse me. Producer gas contain about 70% of nitrogen and about 30% carbon two oxide. So it's um, burning producer gas is I mean it's the it's it's not as flammable as the other one called water gas. Now, let's look at water gas. Water gas consists of um, a mixture of hydrogen and carbon two oxide. A mixture of hydrogen and carbon two oxide. Now, let me explain briefly how producer gas is produced. How producer gas is produced. Producer gas is produced when um, a when air is passed through a hot red coke, hot red coke. So when a mixture of air and nitrogen is passed through a hot uh, red coke, that is where you produce a producer gas. Why? When a steam is passed through a white coke, it, you produce what is called water gas. When steam is passed through, what we produce what is called water gas. 
So water gas burn at a higher temperature compared to producer gas. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Now, these are other allotropes of carbon. Because of time, I might not be able to um, look into all of them one on one. So we have wood charcoal, we have animal charcoal, we have sugar charcoal, we have coke, we have gas carbon, and we have lamp black. Now, I would like to ask this question. List two crystalline allotrope of carbon. Of course, you would note that crystalline allotrope of carbon are diamond and graphite. Now, list four amorphous allotrope of carbon. Of course, you know that you have something called coal, you have coke, you have wood charcoal, you have animal charcoal, you have sugar charcoal, and so on. Now, let's move on to compounds of carbon. Compounds of carbon. Now, the first one that we are going to look at as compound of carbon is oxides of carbon. We are going to look at oxide. Oxides of carbon. Now, the first oxide of carbon we, are going, we have here is carbon 2 oxide. Carbon 2 oxide. While the second one is carbon 4 oxide. CO2. Carbon 4 oxide. Now, we also have um, carbon also exists in triozocarbonate 4. Triozocarbonate 4. That is CO3 2 minus. When this will combine with metals and ammonia, you produce what is called triozocarbonate 4 salt. For example, you have sodium triozocarbonate 4, you have potassium triozocarbonate 4, you have ammonium triozocarbonate 4. So these are some of the compounds of carbon. Now, let's look at the next thing. Now, we have hydrocarbon, hydrocarbon. Like I've said, we have inorganic compounds of carbon. We also have organic compound of carbon. Now, hydrocarbon can be classified into two. Before we look at the classification of hydrocarbon, hydrocarbon simply means uh, something that contains only hydrogen and carbon, organic compound that contain hydrogen and carbon. Now, the classes of hydrocarbon, we have uh, saturated hydrocarbon and we have unsaturated hydrocarbon. And, of course, you will agree with me that saturated hydrocarbon are simply akins. Why unsaturated hydrocarbon are akins, akins, and, of course, we have benzene. So these are saturated hydrocarbon. Because of our time, we're not able to look. You have the uh, formula, the general formula of this on the screen. Akin is CNH2N plus 2. Akin is CNH2N. Akin is CNH2N minus 2. And benzene is CNHN, where N is exactly equal to 6. Okay? Now, let's look at crude oil. You know what we call crude oil around us? You, you, um, the product, I mean, the product of crude oil around us, like we have uh, something like petrol, you have the gas that you, you use at home, that is your cooking gas, you have your petrol, you have your kerosene, you have your diesel, you have your aging oil, and so on. So those are the products of crude oil that we have. Now, these are used in several places. You can see the uses on the screen. Now, um, motor vehicle make use of uh, petrol. We the um, uh, jet aeroplane makes you of use of kerosene. We use cooking gas at home for cooking. In fact, some people recently make use of cooking gas to power their generator. So they have different uses. This is question and answer time. We got a question from Olawale. Olawale said, what is the difference between organic and inorganic compounds of carbon? 
what is the difference between organic and inorganic compounds of carbon. Now, organic compounds of carbon are formed from what we call mineral elements. Mineral elements. They are formed from mineral elements. Why organic compounds of carbon, they are formed from organic matters. They are formed from decayed plants and animals that have um, died many years ago. Why uh, compounds, why organic compounds of carbon are formed from mineral elements? They are, they, they are not formed, they are formed from artificial elements. Why those one, why organic compounds are formed from naturally occurring compounds? Now, examples of um, organic compound of carbon, we have carbon monoxide, we have carbon 2 oxide, we have sodium, sodium triozocarbonate 4, we have ammonium triozocarbonate 4. Now let's look at example of organic compound of carbon. We have methane, we have ethane. C2H6. We have benzene, C6H6, and so on. So these are few examples of organic of inorganic compounds of carbon and organic compounds of carbon. I believe I've answered your question, Olawale. Yes. Now let's answer some questions. We have some questions here on the screen. List 10 compounds of carbon. List 10 compounds of carbon. Of course, I was trying to answer this question the other time, and I've mentioned it several times. So you should be able to list 10 compounds of atom, I mean carbon now. Like we have carbon monoxide, we have carbon fluoride, we have sodium triazocarbonate 4, we have ammonium triazocarbonate 4, we have magnesium triazocarbonate 4, we have calcium triazocarbonate 4, we have uh, methane, we have ethane, we can have propane, we can have butane, we can and many other compounds like that. So they are numerous. Compounds of carbon are numerous. Now let's look at the other question. List the allotropes of carbon. Of course, we have two classes of allotropes of carbon. We have the uh, crystal allotrope of carbon and we have the amorphous allotrope of carbon. And you know that a crystalline allotrope of carbon, excuse me, crystalline allotrope of carbon, we have diamond and graphite. We have diamond and graphite. Why amorphous allotrope of carbon? We have coal, we have coke, we have animal charcoal, we have um, wood charcoal, and so on. Okay, let me ask, ask uh, one more question. Mention four types of coal. Mention four types of coal. Of course, we have number one, we have peat. That's one. We have peat. We have lignite. We have bituminous coal. And also, we have... Um, we have anthracite coal. So thank you very much for being part of this class. So see you until we come your way next week. Thank you very much. Bye. Mm -hmm.